afternoon again, everybody. Welcome to another exciting day in the life of a network admin. I thought I'd go through uh, the unboxing process of a X460 G2 switch from Extreme. Um, these <laughs> these switches are partial assembly required. Get your mom or dad to help. Uh, so first thing is I've got to get the main switch out of the box here. So let's get a box up here and get one of these switches out of it. The box inside, this is the keyboard, uh, I'm sorry, this is the console cable and the mounting gears. Mounting, the mounting kit allows for either a, a two post rack or four post via these. This is the front set of ears, this is the rear set of ears. I never use these. I only mount on two post racks, so this is all I need. So we will set these over here. Console cable. feet if this is just going to be sitting on a desktop uh, and also the screws for the mounting brackets are in this little package here. So we'll set these aside for the moment and get the switch out. Here where we can work on it. Okay. Let's see, I might have to back up a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing here. There we go. A little bit more. So this is the back side of the switch, and this is where the assembly has to take place. Um, so you get a place for a power supply, an optional optional second power supply. This is for the fan module, and this is for your stock stacking module. So we will need to do some stacking. So I'm going to remove this plate for the stacking module. It's screwed on. Um, the other plate is only press fit. So I'm not sure why they do that, but that's what they do. Get these screws out here. This plate off, take that plate off. We are now ready to start inserting some modules here. So, as I said, we'll need, uh, I have elected to use two power supplies. I plug one into a UPS and the other one into just regular wall power. And our wall power is actually protected by a generator. So I've always got protected power, but it's nice to have so you can walk the switches around power-wise and uh, not have to uh, interrupt service at all. So this is the, the uh, power supply. Comes with a little uh, strain relief for the um, power cable. Keep somebody from accidentally pulling it out. Just slide it in with the green tab facing that way, and it just locks into place. These are hot swappable. Those are really nice. That's one. Get the second power supply out. And he goes in just right next to the other one right there. Get redundant power. Uh, next thing I need to put in is the fan module, which with blinding speed I will locate in this box here. Uh, there it is. It comes in its own wonderful little box. Um, let's see where did I put my knife? There's my knife. Sort of 
stuff. module comes with six fans uh, there are two in tandem and there's three of them side by side that slides into the white module here in the middle ish of the unit and thumb screws to secure it and that's the fan module last is the stacking module and I've actually got one sitting over here it's already open so I'm going to grab this one and it slides in the end here and again once it's seated you just turn the thumb screws put the screws to it speed that is what it takes to assemble this guy the um, get a little closer shot so you can see what this all looks like so again we got the stacking module the fan module and the two power supplies and the stacking modules it took me a while to to figure it out actually. So you got an S1 and an S2 connector. S2 on the top switch goes down to S1 on the next switch down in the stack. So if I were to, here I got two switches side by side, I'll just illustrate. So S2 on this would go to S1 here and you do that all the way down the stack and then on the very bottom the S2 cable would come up here to the S1 so that would give you full redundancy or if you just had two you would do s2 to s1 s2 to s1 i said that backwards but you know what i mean um so yeah anyway that is all there is to setting up and unbo unboxing and setting up a uh, extreme x460 g2 switch i hope you found that informing entertaining or at least amusing we'll catch you guys next time Addendum. I forgot to put the mounting ears on. So, special bonus feature. <laughs> Installing the mounting ears. Because if you're watching this, you're so bored that you find even this entertaining. So let's do it to it. I'll take the mounting ears out of the plastic here. Just tear open the end. Pull them both out at once. So these mounting ears actually fit on some pegs here. I'm going to pull you up closer so you can see these pegs. So you see these pegs here on the side of the unit. Um, this is the front at this end. All you do is put the mounting ears and hang them on these pegs. And still, there's room for it to slide around if you want to line up the, you know, make it flush with the front as here, or if you want to just I slide it all the way to the rear. So this, this sticks out proud of the rack just a little bit. And that's okay. Um, so you just hang them on there and uh, put your screws in. I use uh, all six of them. Six per side. So let's go ahead and put those in. One, two. sound like I'm mumbling there. I'm going to tap this to get it all the way back up against these screws and I'll go ahead and tighten them down. I didn't 
torque them down when I put them on the first time just so I can get that bracket all the way to the back. Now I give them a good torquing. Let's spin this around and do the other side. Let's see how quick these go on. They're super simple. I like having the little pegs there to hang the brackets on. I don't have to hold them up or anything. You can line them up while you're putting the screws in. They do that all by themselves. Two more, and then we'll tap the bracket. Sounds horrible, but you know what I mean. We tap the bracket, make it sit at the back here. So the screws are at the very front. Torque them down. There we go. Now that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.